the arrest of a Utah mom who wrote a children's book about grief after her husband's death. She has now been charged with killing him. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? <laughs> Yeah, the story is actually as crazy as it seems. So the woman in question is named Corey Richens. She's from Utah. Uh, and based on what prosecutors are alleging, she might be one of the sloppiest killers of all time. No, not might be, sloppiest killer of all time. Like if you're gonna murder your husband, don't try to like put your name on the life insurance policy that he had just taken you off of. You get what I'm saying? I do. I look. Uh, there was the other woman we covered though, who wrote a book about murdering her husband and then murdered her husband. So I mean, that one. When you write the manual, maybe a little. I don't know if sloppier is the right term, but more likely to get caught. Like at least OJ was smart enough to take advantage of double jeopardy and the like. How we have a ban on double jeopardy. So after he was acquitted, that's when he wrote the book admitting that he murdered yeah. his ex. You know, I love the first title of it. Now, if I had done it. Right, right. <laughs> okay, so look, let's actually get into the details of this particular story. Uh, let's go to this video, which explains a little more. Arresting Corey Richens, a mother of three this week, and charging her with first degree aggravated murder. Investigators say in early March of last year, Corey poisoned her husband, Eric. The 33 year old then telling 911 she found her husband of nine years lying unresponsive and cold to the touch at the foot of their bed, saying she had given him a Moscow Mule cocktail earlier to celebrate a business deal before falling asleep in one of their children's beds. A medical examiner later finding Eric had five times the lethal dosage of fentanyl in his system. Court documents allege Corey on two separate occasions bought $900 worth of pills from a dealer. The first time looking for something dangerously potent, even asking for the Michael Jackson stuff, referring to the king of pop's overdose death from a different powerful painkiller. I will tell you based on experience, extremely common that when one spouse kills the other, they tend to leave a fairly easy trail for law enforcement to follow. Propofol was what uh, killed Michael Jackson, which yeah. you inject. Uh, anyway, she ended up with fentanyl and that's how she allegedly killed her husband. Um, so a few more details I wanna get into here. Uh, actually, before I get to the more detail, I, Cenk is chomping at the bit, oh, go ahead. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So a friend of the show is Josh Mankiewicz. Uh, he's one of the hosts on Dateline. Uh, his brother Ben Mankiewicz is one of the co-founders of this show. And uh, he has this line famous enough that Bill Hader uh, does an impression of it, right? He's like, and in this case, it would be, and I can't wait, Josh is probably gonna do this on Daylight, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if he were talking to her, he'd say, now, now most people, when they hand the poison drink to their husband, don't call 911 and admit that they handed it to him. But you didn't do that, did you? <laughs> totally, <laughs> totally. I mean, she admits to handing him the Moscow mule, which is how she poisoned him, allegedly. Um, now, according to a detective who spoke to Eric's family members uh, a few years ago, during a trip to Greece, Eric, that's the husband who is now dead, uh, became violently ill after his wife made him a drink. Meaning, this was not the first time she tried to poison him. Dude, man, somebody had to take a flashlight around this guy and go, get out! No, get it's, out! I don't. Poor guy, though. I mean, I don't know why he felt like he couldn't leave. He should have left immediately after she tried poisoning him the first time. Corey's that's arrest. That's a good first. That's a good cue to leave. That's yeah. Uh, by like, the door. I really love my husband, but like you know, if he tried to poison me, I'd reconsider. Yeah, I'd that's, reconsider. I think that's fair. Yeah. And by the way, it's not like he didn't suspect her. And he like he, he just, suspected her absolutely. He um, so Eric's family also claimed that he had told them that if anything suspicious happened to him, it was because his wife did it. Like his if wife you have was to, to tell blame. your family members that leave. I know. Leave. So do you think he's culpable in his death? No. I know, poor I'm guy. I'm poor kidding, guy. I'm kidding. Okay. Jesus. So it seems pretty clear uh, what the motive was as well. Okay. And by the way, the children's book was. The children's book that she wrote after he died was meant to help kids cope with grief. And she did a book tour. She did a book tour talking about like, oh, my husband died and I had to help my children cope with it. I mean, you want to talk about late stage capitalism. God. She wanted to make money off of a grief book for kids. Terrible. So she had to kill her husband so they could have the grief to write about.
Wow. Okay, so let's okay, get- Allegedly, by the way, we'll see what happens in court. So let's get to the money part of this, right? Money being a motive. So without telling Corey, that's the wife, Eric changed his will and life insurance policy shortly before his death, making his sister the beneficiary instead of his wife. At one point, Corey allegedly logged into his account and tried to make herself the beneficiary. But the insurance company luckily notified Eric and his business partner and they changed it back. The couple was also allegedly arguing over a nearly $2 million property she wanted to flip, according to the search warrant. The day after Eric's death, the wife allegedly signed the closing papers on the home, the search warrant stated. The day after he dies, homegirl's like, I'm ready to sign the papers for his property. Yeah. I mean, she's not grief stricken, she's not freaking out about it. She's like, all right, on to the next. I don't know how she managed to get the fentanyl in his drink with her ham hands. Okay, that was the most ham handed murder I've ever seen. Like, oh, I logged in to change your insurance right before I killed you. I bet no one will notice, let alone the property. Again, they'll have to prove it in court, but it doesn't look like they're gonna have a hard time. Look, I get the point of life insurance, I do. Um, but how many spouses have been killed as a result of life insurance? <laughs> Probably not that many. But, but enough. But enough, it does That's make you kind of wonder. <laughs> freaking crazy, man. Like, and all those folks who died as a result of greed, and their their spouse wanting to collect the life insurance benefits. Like what were, what was going through their mind? Like what did they pre predict about their future on their wedding day? I think about that not all the time because stories like this don't come up a lot, but when they do, I do think about it. <laughs> so yeah, and, and it's just tragic in so many ways. Yeah, and uh, and but to me, one of the big takeaways from the story is some people just don't have any other. Empathy for any other human being. No, some people are and, vicious and yeah. do not care about human life. At all, at all. And yeah. it's a hard thing for us to relate to because most humans feel you know, anywhere from a little bit to significant empathy for others. I hope it's more in the significant direction. But when you see someone that just flat out doesn't care about another human being at all, at all, so brazen like that. And there are folks like that out there. Oh, that's there's scary, plenty, man. There's plenty of folks out there like that. Um, yeah. Finally, I, I do have to tell you that even after his passing, uh, she really wanted to collect the uh, benefits. So within the past few months, there has been a legal battle between Eric's sister and Corey over his estate. According to the claim, Corey is fighting to have Eric's sister removed as trustee between the value of their house, personal property and contractual rights of a business co-owned by Eric, the value of the estate, wow, totals over $3.6 million. So um, I think the moral of the story is just don't work hard and don't have too many assets because your spouse might kill you. Not sure that's no, the moral. <laughs> I know, I'm kidding. Yeah, a couple of other takeaways from the story. <laughs> Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.